This episode of Building You is brought to you by Promo Corner. Want to support a sales campaign and reach a larger audience? Raise your brand awareness with content sponsorships. For more information, reach out to sales at promocorner.com. This is Building You. This is the 10th and final episode that we have with Kat Hinkley. We cannot thank her enough for coming in during a time when our industry was struggling to find itself and she was helping us build up. Some of the topics that she covered during this entire series was gratitude, growth traps. Uh, she covered uh, communication tips, good habits to create uh, a, a better you. Dealing with stress, power of moments, professional tips to make you look your best. That was that had to be one of my favorite ones. <laughs> and insecurity or jealousy fixed with accountability. And today on the final episode, she is going to talk to us about five life lessons to building a better you. Kat, take it away. Thank you so much, Brandon. What a pleasure it's been to be able to be part of this family and to be able to share something outside of what you normally offer so that people can expand themselves and of course, build you, build themselves so that they can grow personally, which automatically leads into a professional growth. So today's episode, the final episode, I wanted to put together something that's special to me and very personal, which is my five life lessons to building a better you. Now, these life lessons are lessons that I've learned in my life that have helped me to see things a little bit differently, overcome some bumps that I may have run into, and to just be a little bit more present in my life. So I want to start that if you've ever watched anything of mine, I always go back to an affirmation that I learned in college. And these life lessons actually go in order of when I learned them in my life. Be here now. That's the first life lesson. The affirmation, be here now. And very simply put, it is finding the silver lining in everything around you. We all have life and life is not as we expect it. It's normal and expected to not stay smooth. So when we're in situations that are not 100% as we want them to be, it is so very important to recognize what we can get out of that situation by being present now, by seeing what we can see that's either a life lesson or falling forward, however it's going to help us personally. I like to think of the example of being stuck in traffic, which happens to everybody. And now that the world is opening up, there's a lot of traffic. It's like insane traffic out there. And that's never a fun thing. So if you're sitting in traffic, which is frustrating, instead of allowing yourself to get road rage or be frustrated, think about the opportunity of being able to relax and listen to music that you love or catch up with old friends on the phone or listen to a podcast so you can have some personal growth. Whatever the situation is, find what you can take out of it as a silver lining. Another thing with Be Here Now is actually recognizing the good of what you have. When COVID hit, we all realized that everything was so great before everything was shut down. And we fall into these habits and these routines of expectation. And when we just go through the motions, we're not having a full appreciation of the beauty around us, of the people that we get to spend time with, of what we as humans are able and capable of doing. So take those things that we take for granted every single day. Remember now what we have lost for a short while and embrace those and focus on be here now. Use that affirmation in your life so that you can be present in your mind to find that silver lining. That's the first life lesson. The second life lesson is learn to be a better person by recognizing what you don't like about others. <laughs> now, I learned this when I was a young mom and we all want to become better people. We want to be better people for our loved ones. We want to be better people for ourselves that we can grow professionally or just as a human being in life. It's hard to learn everything that we want to do the right way because we're not faced with everything right away. And when we're reading about lessons and, and habits to develop to be better people, sometimes it's hard to put those into practice if we're not faced with a specific situation. 
as a young mother, it was very easy for me to, when I'm in certain social situations, see other mothers react with their children in certain ways that I did not like. So what it allowed me to do, as opposed to trying to become a mother of a certain stature, to, to do things a certain way, it taught me what I didn't want to do, how I didn't want to behave so that I could be a better mother. I hope that makes sense. So we can learn to become a better person by recognizing what we don't like that's going on around us. Have you ever been with somebody that's completely disrespectful? Like another adult human and they have no respect for anybody else? It drives me nuts. So it helps me to work very hard at becoming much more respectful towards other people. The one thing about this number two life lesson is that many times we see in other people reflection of ourselves. So sometimes what we see in their behavior are actual behaviors that we might be putting out there in a small way. So you want to pay extra close attention as to how you behave so that you can make sure that you're behaving not in a bad way, but in a way that you want to aspire to. So work on becoming the person that you want to be. First life lesson, be here now. Second life lesson, learn from other people's mistakes so that you can become a better person and be who you want to be. Number three, this was a huge one. And this third life lesson is what actually launched me into this part of my life, the personal development, the, the corporate coaching, everything to help people to be in a more mindful way to create a more fulfilling, successful lives for them. I had read the book, Emotional Intelligence. And the one thing that I learned from this that like blew my mind was that I have no control over anybody else. I only have control over me in how I respond to everything that's going on around me. Like, oh my God, right? Like seriously, how many of you, I hope I'm not the only one, how many of you actually think that we have control over what and how other people behave? We think if we you know, get up on our soapbox and we tell them exactly why we feel a certain way, that it's going to change their minds. Well, you know, sometimes if we're real lucky, we can do that. But most of the time, what we have to realize is that we only have control over ourselves and we cannot control other people. I always encourage everybody to put the information out there, but more importantly, as opposed to telling somebody what they're doing wrong, come to a situation with how you can help to make changes. Always come with a solution as opposed to complaining about a problem. That's the best way to get something done in life because nobody wants to tell, be told that they're doing something wrong. The other thing, this is a little bit of information to help all of you out there, especially in your relationships. When you're dealing with somebody that you know that there's a, a, a disagreement, there's a, there's a disconnect, always explain how you're feeling with your own personal feelings. I feel a certain way. This is how it makes me feel as opposed to you are doing this or you make me feel a certain way. Remember, nobody has control over you just like you don't have control over them. So they can't make you feel a certain way. We feel a certain way because we choose to feel that way. And if you don't want to feel a certain way, you need to make a decision to find a path to become more connected or more communicative so that you can Find out what the problem really is and find some solutions. Number one, be here now. Number two, learn from other people's behaviors so you can change yourself. Number three, you only have control over yourself and not over anything else. I highly recommend learning more about emotional intelligence. There are actually 27 keys to emotional intelligence. Number one is self-mastery. And if we can learn how to accept the fact that we have the opportunity to grow, that we don't know everything, it opens up an incredible opportunity for us to learn and to grow. So with that number three, we don't have control over anybody else except for ourselves. I highly encourage you now that we're not going to have these programs anymore to do this on your own. Learn about EQ because soft skills are so important. It doesn't matter how smart you are, what information you have in your brain, if you cannot communicate effectively with other people, and that's huge. Number four, now this one you might not like, but it's true. Number four, 
you spend time, energy, and money on the things that you really want to do. <laughs> now, the reason you might not like it is because a lot of us like to make excuses. I don't have enough money to go out. I don't have enough money to get a new car. I don't have the time to work out. I don't have the energy to put more time into work to get ahead. But have you ever known somebody that's complained about not having enough money? They never have money to do anything, but then all of a sudden they have a new car. If you really want something, you're going to find the time, you're going to find the energy, and you're going to find the money. So you need to become accountable for what you do and for what you don't do. And it's much better to be open and honest and fair with yourself to understand that it's okay that you don't want to do everything. It's okay that you choose to not spend money on frivolous things, but you have a goal, you have a focus. Because once those things are presented to you, you're going to make it happen. You have to stop blaming other people for the failures in your life that you have control over. Listen, I'm, I, I, these are life lessons that I've learned. I am one of the first people to complain about not having the, the time or energy to say food prep or work out when I also complain about being overweight. We have control over us. And if it really is important to you, you will find the time, the energy, and the money. Become accountable. That's another part of emotional intelligence is personal accountability. And once you can say, yeah, <laughs> you know, I can totally do something about it and own that, it actually is a step towards your goals. Because once you realize that you have that control and if it becomes important enough, you're going to take the steps then it's going to happen. There's a big difference between action and motion, right? Now, it's really easy to say that you want to do something. You can even research how to do something, but until you get your butt off, off that couch and do something about it, it's, it's not putting you into motion. So make sure that you commit yourself to being accountable and moving forward with the things that are important, but take ownership of the things that you don't do as a opposed to blaming some outside source. And then the last life lesson that I'm going to talk about today is gratitude. And I'm ending with gratitude because I started my very first program with gratitude. And you can certainly go back and watch that because it's going to be more in depth. But today's story about gratitude is that you think it's easy to be grateful you think it's easy to be kind. You think it's easy that this is just a part of life, but it actually can become something that isn't a natural part of life. If we don't incorporate gratitude into our lives, it can actually affect our health. It can give us hypertension. It can put weight on us. It can make us stressed out. By practicing gratitude, we can increase our physical health. We can increase our emotional health. It allows us to sleep better. I actually made some notes because there's so much that goes along with gratitude that if you become grateful for what you have around you, for the people that are part of your life, you're going to realize that you're happier, you're more well balanced, and you're going to be able to. Um, improve your self-esteem as well. So I encourage you to go back and watch the first episode, which is focused on gratitude and it gets into this subject a little bit more deeply. But the fifth life lesson is to incorporate that gratitude into your life. Did you know that you don't even have to share your gratitude for it to impart its health benefits on you? You can think it in your brain and you're going to receive the benefits. So it's an amazing thing because it literally changes our chemistry in our brain to release positive chemicals through our body to help us to feel better and to be better people to be around, quite honestly. So in a wrap up, 
Today's five life lessons that I think can absolutely build a better you. Number one is to be here now, be present every day and find the silver lining of everything that's going on. Even if it doesn't seem like you're in an ideal situation, you can either learn or you can grow or you can just appreciate the one things that you can find out of them. Number two, learn to be a better person by seeing what other people do that you don't like. Number three, you only have control over you. Stop trying to control other people. Read the book, Emotional Intelligence. I think you'll get a ton out of it because it helps us with self-mastery because it doesn't matter how smart you are if you aren't able to communicate in a normal fashion. Number four, you spend time, energy, and money on the things that are truly important to you. So become accountable to yourself that if there's something you don't want to do, don't blame others. Don't think that anybody else is holding you back because there's so many things that we have the ability to do, we just choose not to do it. So if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, stop talking about it and move on. And then the last one, number five, is gratitude. Remember that contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want, but the realization of how much you already have. And we have an abundance of beauty around us. We have health, we have happiness, we have jobs, we have this incredible world that we can now go back out into. So appreciate what we do have and stop complaining about the things that you don't have. Instead, come up with solutions on how to make things better. So in the finale of Building You, if you guys want to follow me, my name is Catherine McDonald Hinkley. I'd love to see you on Facebook. I do put videos out there on a regular basis and you can reach me in that way. And I can't thank you enough, Promo Corner, for this opportunity. It was such a great time to spend time with you. Mm -hmm.